Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode, we are continuing where we left off, that cliffhanger, as we have this mission in the SOI of Titan. However, unfortunately the staging had an issue, and so we're, we're waiting for this stage to uh, go off. And unfortunately that throws off when we were trying to get this lander down and also troublesome is the fact that our periapsis is currently negative so maybe this is all gonna end up coming down at this rate that would not be ideal as far as contracts we're trying to fulfill are concerned I think that this is fulfilling nothing in particular so we have our leeway as far as what to do with this anyway six more minutes until that stage goes we're already 14 minutes past this node, so probably this is not the node that we're looking for here. Why don't I just um, stop that for a sec? It's at least balance things out. Uh, probably what we need to do is just uh, step outside of the atmosphere a bit. I don't know. I mean, on one on the one hand, maybe we should just plunge everything in. We're going to reach there in 28 minutes, but the lander has only got a stage in one hour and six minutes. Well, I guess one thing I could do is, like, hang, keep the lander on. Uh, we could do that by just uh, creating, like, a dummy thing. Uh, or the parachute could be a stage. You see, we could uh, create a fake staging here. And then that stage won't go off. In fact, uh, we might want to just keep this one on, too. We'll think about that. So uh, we'll have that there and maybe another uh, fake staging. We'll have this set of RCS thrusters here. Well, that'll allow us to keep our lander, but do we really need to keep the lander? That I don't know. Now, how much did it take to step out? Uh, well, a fair amount. And let's say we do try and make orbit. How much did that cost? Um, well, basically all we've got. Um, maybe it's not even going to be enough. I don't know if we could like pass into Titan's atmosphere just a little bit and it could help us slow down. Maybe this is the time to experiment with that. We're not doing any particular other experiments, otherwise we would have to have queued it. By the time we do any other experiment, we uh, we might have just enough time to queue some more experiments. Let's try it. Let me tell it to queue some experiments here. Uh, let's just log visual observations. We'll still barely be in Titan SOI, but not close to Titan, unfortunately. I missed the chance to do those. Maybe I should... Uh, I mean, Titan's atmosphere, let's see. I guess we have to focus on Titan. Yeah, focus. Um, it's 0 0.6 atmospheres. So, you know, at 600 kilometers, maybe we can go into it a little bit. I mean, Earth's atmosphere is thicker than Titan's atmosphere. Now, we're going very fast, so that's a downside. But let's try 400 kilometers. Maybe it can help out. And, of course, that uh, makes our Delta V requirements for this radial burn a little bit less. Okay, and... That was just an innocuous thruster staging. Okay, good. That's what I wanted. And let's go to that node and burn. Well, if we encounter Titan once, maybe we can figure out how to encounter it again. Logically, there must be some sort of orbital period that we can get into around Saturn, which would be a multiple of Titan's own orbit. Right? And that would lead us to encounter it again in the same place. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. Uh, I forgot that, um... If you hover over any Mechjeb window, it doesn't, uh capture your command so when I throw down it wasn't listening to me anymore okay well 
this is another question. If we do go into Titan's atmosphere a bit, will it kill us? We're going to find that out. Some more practical science before we get the science that we've queued up here. Let me take a quick look at Wikipedia to figure out the orbital period of Titan. It says 16 days. Uh, 15.945 days to be exact. So like, uh, if we can remember sort of a multiple of 16 days when we get into orbit around Saturn, that should be pretty close, hopefully. That seems doable, doesn't it? But now we have to worry about burning up because we're going 15,000 meters per second and maybe encountering Titan's atmosphere at all is, you know, cause for death. We are going in the opposite direction, so that's not good. And then at the, uh, well, we need to actually do the burn at periapsis, so let's see about that. 3,355 we have here. Can we capture with that? Now, mind you, the atmosphere is going to do something or another. Yeah, it looks like it. Let's make the plot loose. How long is that? Uh, well, 96 days would be quite long, but multiple of 16. That's good. Okay, well, let's get closer. It's a six minute burn time, so we're actually going to start well ahead of uh, periapsis. This is not the best place to make orbit around Saturn. You'd rather be as close to Saturn as possible, but I don't think we're getting any closer to Saturn anyway, so we'll be on our way out after our encounter with Titan. So might as well use Titan's gravity to whatever extent we can. Here we go. Oh. Okay. Well, disappointing, but we got our answer. Basically, encountering uh, Titan's atmosphere at 15,000 meters per second is insta dead. Well, okay. Yeah, insta death. <laughs> for, for a little bit there, the, the little lander portion with the heat shield tried to hold out, but... It got killed too. Maybe if it was heat shield down, it would have... Eh, probably not. It probably wouldn't have survived anyway. Okay, and that was like right when we hit the 600 kilometer mark. So that's pretty formidable. I mean, considering it only has 0.6 atmospheres of pressure. And then it insta-deaths us right when we hit 600 kilometers. That's, uh, that's daunting. That's daunting. Maybe that's different in 1.2.2, because uh, in a different series, during live streams, we sent a lander into Titan, and granted, we weren't going retrograde, so we didn't have as much speed, but it wasn't insta-death, so maybe it was because we were not retrograde, maybe it's because something has changed in 1.2.2, I don't know, but, well, this is what happened with this mission. Let's go back to the Space Center. Alright, well, let's do a quick Moonport resupply since they only have about 20 odd days worth of food, water, and oxygen. Gotta keep our peoples fed and watered. So, let's target the moon and send this on its way. Just a quick mission. Routine, perfectly routine. And I won't belabor it, and then we'll see what we can do next. Unfortunately, we've, we've got all those Voyager window missions being built and built, but we sort of have to actually wait for the window, so we can't do that just yet. Uh, as far as other opportunities are concerned, um, there isn't exactly a transfer window I'm looking at until, I guess this Mars one we should build something for, but the Voyager transfer window is going to come before that, I think, though I've got this one from Transfer Window Planner, and that seems later. So that's another thing. 
probably will be time warping to this uh, correction maneuver for this Titan shot so that I can encounter Tethys. So there'll be some science there. That'll be good. We sort of lost out on science on the Titan mission. Maybe should have brought it further away from Titan on reflection. Anyway, uh, yep. Yeah. We'll just get on with this. Thrall up, SAS is on, and ignition. And launch. Speed of sound, everything is looking good. Awaiting booster separation. Okay, booster set. Still curious about why we aren't recovering those, though. They do have. Oh, maybe that's why. They do have parachutes, but. If they blow up, that well, they seem to still be in relatively few pieces. Something should survive, if only the parachutes. Okay, fairing separation. Try that again. Oh, wait, pause. Okay. Off they go. Ooh, that's a little bit of a tight fit. Maybe should be later on. It's so close to uh, when the first stage would end anyway. Okay, separation. And ignition. The core stage went fine, the boosters went fine, and we are now on the J2. Okay, we are about to make orbit here. shutdown of the J2, 265 by 238. Let's get on over to the moon. Okay, we have a plot, but it leaves us about 14 degrees of inclination off from the station. We will try and correct that with a mid-course adjustment or in lunar SOI, but we'll do this now since the note is coming up pretty soon. So, let's turn. Oh, and uh, RCS on. Okay, Selling the fuel down and ignition. Ah, it. Oh, this this J2 doesn't like to show its information on the icon. Okay, let's try it again. Selling fuel down. It says very stable. Uh, it seemed like it would be would have been very stable previously, but here we go. Okay, now we're going. No worries. Okay, well, looks like we're going to burn out this stage as usual. Yep, and that'll be fine. Separation. And ignition. Oop, 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 uh, oh, we have to go all over to the other side. Yes, that's okay. All right. Well, let me uh, try and see where we can do the correction, and I'll meet you in Lunar SOI. Okay, I opted to head straight in and handle this as expeditiously as possible, but I'm a little bit worried about our communication, though it seems like Moonport 1 itself is relaying us, but eventually there might be a horizon problem. It should be going pretty fast, though not as fast as we are. There's probably some other satellite around that could relay us, right? Uh, they all seem to be on the other side, though, right now. Got one there, one there. They're all on the opposite side, so probably safer to start now. I mean, of course, I could probably throttle up even without communication, but let's try and do this legit. Well, I guess the best we can do is semi-legit, since we still don't have any communication when I need to shut down. 30 kilometers. Well, we can probably fix that somewhere. Perhaps somewhere with communication. Oh, out there would be good. At that ascending node where 
we have uh, good apoapsis. The altitude will help in uh, making the inclination correction. Well, we're not exactly close to the station, but we're matching speeds with it as best we can. And hopefully that will bring our closest approach distance closer. Okay, we've got a good close approach distance now. Also lights. <laughs> very, very much lights. Okay, we are good on approach and we are preparing to dock. We've selected our docking port. Closing about 100 meters away now. Okay, looking good. No obvious problems. We are moving towards the docking port, retracting solar panels. Okay, we have contact and we are docked. So, how much food, water, and oxygen do we have now? Uh, almost 200 days and what will that get us through well uh, this maneuver on the Titan shot uh, this um, SOI change so this mission is entering the SOI of Jupiter which is good because I think we've got a, a contract for that and uh, the Jupiter and Mars transit window as well as this Ganymede lander and how about the Earth orbit station well that's also in 200 days so we'll have to get our supply vessels, of course, built, but otherwise I think we're good to go for the Voyager window. All right, so that's what I wanted. Let's go back to the Space Center. Okay, so I decided to make a new Mars sample return mission. And so if we take a look in here, all we've got is two goo containers and a parachute on top of one of these octo cores, early controllable cores, and a heat shield. The antennae are Sputnik antennae, so they won't break off. And uh, I don't know about the heat on them, but it doesn't really matter. All we need to do is uh, arm the parachute and or, uh, use their tiny little RCS thrusters and a trivial amount of Arizinian N204 here to make sure it can orient into the atmosphere properly for recovery. And so that's it there, and if the antennae break off, that's fine, as long as the parachute has already been armed. But that's, you know, on after we get back to Earth. To get back to Earth, we have uh, the next stage. This stage uh, transfers back to Earth and uh, make sure that the probe is properly oriented into the atmosphere. Except for the last little bit of corrections, of course, which the probe can handle. And uh, you'll know parachutes on here. Well, that, those are parachutes uh, for landing on Mars, not, uh, not for Earth. So those are drogue chutes to slow it down. These are engines to lift off. Um, no, those are actually transfer engines. These here are the engines to lift off of Mars's surface and come back. It, they will also be used a tiny little bit to ensure a safe landing on the surface. But this is the liftoff tank. And again, this is the transfer back tank though. This one might finish orbit. So that's the plan. And of course, this is the aero capture heat shield for Mars. And this is a correction stage. This is just to make sure that we are, you know, aim that Mars properly after the transfer. And the transfer is made uh, with a relight of the J2 stage. This is uh, the standard, you just saw this rocket launch, it's a Nico uh, 44, uh, sorry, uh, Nico 440X, 440X, except now we've added four more boosters, so it's 840. And that was necessary to get the required amount of Delta V. I could have removed the parachutes since it doesn't seem to recover them anyway, but it doesn't really matter that much for the Delta V. So, in any case, it's a heavier launcher than the one you just saw, but that's just by adding extra boosters. That's alright because we have the Saturn instrument unit here, so we're not going to run out of avionics. And uh, there's a uh, Thor Delta avionics, or oh, sorry, not the Thor Delta. Delta Avionics Unit, which can handle 275 tons right here. And of course, solar panels to make sure that's powered 
and this will hang out with the rest of it until that stuff goes into the Mars atmosphere. This will probably burn up in the Mars atmosphere. And that's the plan. So that will be for our transfer window there. And I've already got it on the build list. So all is well. Uh, I guess since we've got stuff building, and most of the stuff has to be launched later, uh, taking a look at our build list, well, maybe we should make two of these, like uh, have a backup, because, yeah, otherwise I don't know what else to make right now. Maybe I'll put some different instruments on the second one, maybe... Hmm, what, what else could we recover? The problem is the science... Uh, I was gonna say science lab, but it's not really the science lab in this. It's the film return camera. It's a little bit too heavy for this. And there's nothing else that really makes sense to recover, does there? Um, yeah, maybe I'll just uh, make a backup of this. It's not that expensive in the grand scheme of things. And it'd be nice to make sure that the mission happens. I mean, then that's just in case you know, test flight finally decides to kill an engine or something like that. So we'll make another one of these. If it turns out that uh, we don't need it for Mars itself, we could divert it to Phobos Ademos and maybe make a sample return from one of those. Uh, the landing on them will be a little bit more difficult. Well, I guess we'd have to air capture around Mars first. Yeah, but then taking off would be easier. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a plan. All right, so we'll uh, build maybe two more of these. One for Phobos, one for Deimos, and we'll try them out. All right, so I think uh, I'll be time warping through to the Titan shot maneuver there, and I'll see you there. Okay, so here we are with our remaining Titan shot probe, and we want to try and hit Tethys. Uh, there's the Tethys encounter. We'll be able to take care of that and do the flyby before doing anything else because that's in nine days. We just need to adjust our orbit by this 164.7 meters per second. So let's do that. Uh, Smart ASS turn to the node and go for it. Try to activate SES, but of course you can't do that uh, with that kind of signal delay. Okay, there we go, a Tethys encounter. I don't think Tethys can do much as far as, like, fixing our orbit or anything. Oh, well, you seem to have lost it. And I don't know if it's going to spit us out in a way that we could hit something else. Let's see. Um, maybe we can aim for Dion next. Oh, uh, somehow we got some more funds. Did we complete a contract or something? Uh, well, we've completed some vessels. Ah, crew duration record of 90 days. Oh, it decided to count a crew duration record, record without me constantly focusing on it. That's novel. That, like, never happens. We've done crew duration record of 90 days before, so... Interesting that I decided to count it now. We may get a chance to meet up with Enceladus like this. Yep, there it is. So, oh, no, sorry, Mimas, not Enceladus, Mimas. Don't get too excited, Enceladus fans. Anyway, so, Tethys encounter, then this maneuver, this is 196 here, but it says more than that over there. Uh, but whatever this maneuver is, uh, it says 212.6 meters per second there in 70 days. And then we'll be able to meet Mimas in 80 days. And after that, hopefully, we'll be able to finagle some other flyby. All right, so let's get that alarm in. So we will continue this mission properly. And I'll try and make sure every time... Uh, we do an encounter like this one on Tethys that we set up another encounter with another moon and that'll be good. Eventually we'll meet up with Titan like the name says but might be a while. 
I'm just going to focus on the Tethys science here. But we do need to set that up before we actually reach Tethys SOI, so we've got to be careful. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. I think I better do it now. I don't know. Um, how, how long is that? 5,000 seconds. Jeez. One hour is 3,600 seconds, so that leaves 1,400 seconds. One hour and 23 minutes. Um, and let's get that 75 in too. One hour and 24.5 minutes. Okie dokie. And we'll want both Tethys, the start of the encounter, high over Tethys, and also at Tethys periapsis. Hopefully Tethys periapsis is low over Tethys. Hmm. Maybe we should try and get a little bit lower. Oh, but then I'll ruin the next node. Let's not do this one. Okay, we'll just take what we get. Okay, so one hour and 25 minutes is the delay. Let's... Oh, I don't know about the bio sample. I'll save that for Titan, like we were supposed to. Okay, and now we'll queue up the stuff at Periapsis, if it'll let me. Okay, so I've tried. Let's see what happens. Uh, maybe I'll, I should give them all another go, just in case I miscalculated something. And of course they might not get the science the first time. You know how that goes. Oh, we've got a sort of zigzag path. Don't often see one of those. Oh, this is a little bit early. It's high over Saturn. Okay, that analyzed telemetry should be in Tethys SOI, but those other ones were too early. And it's just a minute to uh, Tethys periapsis, so not much time. Okay, uh, in space just above Tethys' flatlands. Well, it says just above right away, so there's no high over Tethys, actually. Okay, and we've got 887 signs right now. That was 68 signs added right there. And that is true. It did so. A bit of a stickiness as we log visual observations. 90 science. Flatlands. How flat are we talking about? Are we talking about two-dimensional flatlands? No. So it's not that flat. Okay, transmit that temperature scan. Maybe we'll get a different biome. Okay, that one was added. Still flatlands. I think it'll only be a different biome if we go over a crater or something. How long till the end? One minute. Okay, so these will be uh, done before we escape Tethys SOI. Okay, 75 science added. Okay, Geiger counter. We're racking up the science all right. It's like a two minute encounter with Tethys. Let's actually see it in this. Uh, it's still flatlands. Oh, there's Tethys. Not much to see since it's in the dark. Oh, there's a bit of light there. Yep, no luck. It's all flatlands. 
And we're already high over Saturn now. Okay, so that was our encounter with Tethys. All together, we got uh, maybe 400 something science out of that. And on we go. This is the view of Saturn when we were just passing by Tethys. Interesting. And we are en route to our adjustment in 61 days, which will take us on... Okay, it doesn't seem to be taking us on a flyby of uh, Mimas right now. Let me reset. And we probably have to adjust that because, you know, going through an SOI, it sometimes changes things. So, let me just make sure that's all right. Maybe we'll just have to wait because it's showing me a closest approach over here now, which doesn't seem right. Instead of over there. Huh, it seems to be that our node is going to be a little bit later. Okay, we've got that meme encounter. Alright, so that's all set up. We can depart and leave our Titan probe for 79 days. So let me get rid of the previous alarm, which was only 61 days, and add this new one. Okay, apparently some change was made, but everything's all set. And uh, with that, I think uh, I'll call it an episode. We have plenty of things lined up, really close to when we need to launch our missions to Jupiter and to Mars. So look forward to that in the next episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.